It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about some upgrades to NetBird. Now I've been using NetBird for a while since I showed it to you the very first time and we actually used it to set up part of our making a managed service provider business on open source. It's an incredible open source product. I really love the things that they're doing. They're keeping it open source which is super important and they've come out with some incredible updates since the first time I've shown it to you to be honest. So I thought it's a good time for me to do an update. Somebody happened to ask me today, hey, what's this new relay thing that they came out with? So I wanted to talk about that and go through that with you and show you how to update your system so that you can get it to use the relays as well. And just kind of talk through some of those things with you, show you how to get it going. And in the meantime, I'm working on several different things for not only the managed service provider or building a business on open source, but just in your home lab as well. So I'm working on some really great backup software working on some awesome software for deploying different applications and having a lot of control over that and kind of building out something that would be a little bit like your own Hetzner or DigitalOcean or Linode with your one-click apps. It's, it's a little bit of a mix of different things, but I'm super excited about it. I'm working on some uh, security infrastructure type applications as well that we'll go through and, and how to set it up and how to run it and manage it. So all kinds of really cool things that I'm working on, but they're all taking time just because of one, I want to make sure that I know them really well, that I understand how to get them set up in a repeatable way so that I can help you do the same thing, that I can help you get everything up and running in a way that makes you useful as soon as you're done with the video, basically. Um, and then I want to make sure that when you have questions, I can try to answer you as much as possible. So for me, it's, it's about really feeling confident and knowing the software and not just jumping in and trying to show you something really quick. So we're going to get into how to set up and upgrade NetBird here in just a minute. But first I wanted to say thank you so very much to all of my patrons over at Patreon. It just means so much to me that you enjoy my content and that you want to support the, the ongoing content creation. So for you guys, videos going up from now on are going to be uploaded directly to Patreon. So you can watch them without any ads from YouTube. You can watch them without any 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 kind of issues like that where you're having to watch any kind of ads or sit through things. For everybody who does buy me a beer, buy me a coffee on PayPal, man, I, it just brightens my day when I see one of those comes through. So thank you so very much for that. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that, but it really means a lot to me. And it means a lot that you feel and that you, that you enjoy the content enough that you want to send me a little bit of money. All right, let's get into the update of NetBird. So I'm gonna jump over to their GitHub because they've got their releases and this is a really important page. If you wanna know what's happening in releases, whether it's GitHub or GitLab or anything else, come to these pages and see if there's either an RSS feed that you can jump on, which is, which is one of the easiest ways, and then get an RSS reader and you'll get notifications of any of these things that you care about when they get updated, or you can subscribe to that project and then sign up for notifications for updates, things like that. It's a really good way to know when things are coming out. Um, I didn't know that this one had come out and somebody else asked me about it, so I need to do the same thing. I need to eat my own dog food here in, in that sense. Uh, but version 0.29.0 is the one they asked me about. And you can see it was only three days ago. They've already made improvements and released version 0.29.1 yesterday. So two days later, they made some improvements based on people's feedback and questions. And what was awesome, if we go back down here to 29.0, if you look at these release notes, they say, hey, we're making, we're, we're, we're moving away from the turn relay. Now that doesn't mean that you can get rid of it, but they're moving away from using it for some of the things that they were using it for. And instead they're gonna be using uh, straight up web sockets with TCP because they found that making that peer-to-peer -peer connection is much more seamless if you use web sockets, that it allows them to do a lot more things when you use web sockets. And they're just trying to make improvements to the way the system works overall. This means now that they've got a new relay server that you need to set up. And if you've already got a system up and running, you need to go and up, upgrade that thing. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's super straightforward. It is not difficult. I just had to do a little bit of research to figure out how to do it, but they give you some pretty good instructions. They don't quite tell you everything you need to know right here. I wish they had um, like the port number. I wasn't sure like what port are they using. So I had to go look through and somebody else happened to ask that question and they, they gave that information. So that was great. Uh, but everything else you probably already have set up other than maybe this auth secret and I'll show you the command on how to create that as well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade my, my in production system that I'm using right now for SysMain IT. So we'll go through that together and you can kind of see how that gets done. Then you've got to upgrade your Docker Compose and then you're also gonna upgrade your management.json file out there on your NetBird server. And then you're gonna restart some things and it's gonna come up and start running. 
And then you'll want to go and update your clients. You'll want to make sure that your clients are all up to date as well. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like and how to do that. If you're running them on Linux, most likely, if you've used like a package manager to get it in there, the good thing is you just run your package manager updates like you always do and you'll get the updated client. Windows will tell you, hey, I've got an update. So the next time it updates, you can go and get an updated client, things like that. Um, it stays pretty well up to date. So I've got some things on some of my systems that I've got to update that are Windows, but I'm waiting until the weekend to get into that one. Now, if you haven't already done NetBird, I have some other videos. I'll link to them in the show notes in the description so you can go check them out. But NetBird is basically a mesh VPN that gives you a ton of extra features. So when I go into my NetBird, you can see here that it's going to bring me to my own authentic authentication. So it's already using my OIDC or my authentic authentication here. And I'm going to let that log in. It's going to bring me back to NetBird. NetBird's going to load up and it's going to show me all of my devices. And it shows me the IP addresses of my devices, which is great. And these things are all connected through NetBird. Now, this is not just a mesh VPN. It's a mesh VPN that uses WireGuard. On top of that, you get this nice thing about, hey, if it's a server, you can get these setup keys and set up your servers in a really easy way by using your own authentication in the same way that you do if you were to use the, the client on a desktop. Now, on the desktop, when I go to connect my client, it pops up in, this, in the middle of the desktop and it says, hey, you need to log in through your authentication method just through your browser, just like we just did. And I go through that process and then it authenticates my desktops. On my servers, you get a special key for each server. You can use it, you can make it reusable, but I like to get a separate one for every server. So I have to revoke it, I'm just revoking that one machine. But yeah, um, it's really cool. Once you go there, you've got this access control and you've got these different policies you can set. So right now I've got some pretty simple ones, but I turned off uh, the one that's default, which says all machines can talk to each other. And I created a couple of my own, which is one for a customer, one for my home. So I, I can say, hey, these machines can talk to each other and these machines can talk to each other. But the machines that aren't in this group can't talk to machines from this group and vice versa. These machines that are in this group can't talk to my home group. They have to be in both. So you can set up all kinds of rules like that. And it's really awesome to be able to do that. Uh, you also get this really nice kind of posture check. So is this machine connecting from somewhere that I trust? That's one of the checks you could do with a posture check. You could say, is this machine connecting from within the United States? Or is this machine connecting from within Canada? Or is this machine connecting from within, from within the EU somewhere? If you're looking for your machines to be connecting from a specific geographic location or to be blocked if they're coming from other specific geographic locations, you can set that up with these posture checks where it says, hey, I see that you're not coming from the right place. I'm not going to let you connect. And there's a lot of different kinds of posture checks that you can set up. And this kind of creates almost a zero trust network, which is another thing that I'll go into uh, on another video, which is really kind of an awesome thing. But yeah, NetBird lets you have some of that control, which is pretty awesome. And when you start talking about network routes, again, I kind of talked about this. I created these different networks. And you can see here, like this is my homeland, this is my client network, those kind of things that I've set up. You've got DNS that you can set up. I haven't done any of this stuff yet, but you can set up specific DNS and you can have it function, but it sets up some really cool DNS for you as well. So if you look, each of my machines has an IP, but it also gets this dot self hosted thing. And I can, as long as I'm on a machine that's on this network, I can go to this machine by this by this host name here, which is kind of awesome. So it sets up this nice uh, set up this this nice DNS capability and name server capability for us. NetBird is kind of an amazing tool because it flattens out things across lots of different networks on the internet. And if you've ever heard of TailScale, this is just like TailScale, except TailScale is closed source for the server. Net, NetBird is completely open source for the server, for the clients, for everything. They've just made such an incredible product. I love this product. I think it's I think it's amazing, um, and I think they're they're an awesome company. So, so I'm logging into my production system here with NetBird. Now, the first thing you've got to do is get into the right folder to make these adjustments. And the way you do that, if you've followed all their instructions, you followed my videos, which follow their instructions anyways. So I'm going to see it in a Docker. You may not have this. You may just have NetBird. That's fine. Uh, we're going to do CD NetBird, just like that. And then we're going to go to infrastructure like this. And it's going to be NetBird slash infrastructure underscore files and then slash. And we want to go to artifacts. So if you get to this path, you're doing good. We're going to do an LS. And if you look right here, we've got a few different files. We need to edit this Docker compose.yaml file and this management.json file. These are the only ones we need to edit. Everything else we're going to leave the same. So we're just going to do this. Um, 
nano docker compose.yaml first. So if we look in here, now I've got some secrets. I'll try to blur those things out so you guys can't see those things, but don't sweat it. I'll do my best. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom of this file. All right, we're doing good. In this section, I don't have anything set up other than the Coturn server. So I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to make a space and I'm just going to go up above it and I'm just going to go out here and I'm going to make one more. And I'm going to do two spaces, pound, and I'm going to put relay. And I think they actually already have that, but we'll just put it for ourselves. I'm going to put out a couple of spaces here. I'm going to go back to their instructions. I'm going to go right here. Yeah, see, they've got pound relay. So I'm just going to grab this part right here below that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back into my terminal. I'm going to paste it in here just like this. Now we need to go up and set up a couple of things. We've got to set up our port number. This is a specific port, so if you if you aren't planning to change this, you don't need to do anything other than type in the same number. It's going to be 33080. Right below that, we're going to put in our domain name. So in my case, my domain is netbird.sysmainit.com. And I'm going to put in the exact same port number. It is 33080. Now you've got this auth secret that you have to also get. So we're going to go and generate that. But down here where you've got this ports section, you can see that they want the port. And what they're wanting here is on the left side of the colon, they want the host port. So if for some reason 33080 is already in use on your host, you need to pick a different port and put it on this left side. And you need to remember what that is. But for us, 33080 is fine. Uh, you shouldn't have that port in use. It's an odd port. I've never heard anything else use it, so hopefully you're set. But we're going to go here. We're just going to type in 33080. And then on the right side of the colon, we're going to type in the same exact number. So it's going to be 33080. So you should have something like that. We're going to go generate this auth secret, and they give us a great little script to help us do that, or a little one-liner that we can do. So we're going to save this with Control-O. We're going to just hit Enter. We're going to do Control-X to exit. And let's go grab that one-liner. And it's right here in their instructions. So it's right here. And again, I'll have this in my show notes as well, just so you guys don't have to go looking through their instructions and try to find it. I'm just going to grab all of this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go right here and just paste it in. And it's going to give me a nice key right here. So I'm just going to grab this key. I'm going to copy it with Control Shift C, or you can do right click and then copy. It's kind of up to you how you do that. And then I'm going to go right back into that Docker Compose file. I'm going to come back to my relay section right here. And I'm going to get back right behind that equal sign for the auth secret. I'm going to do Control Shift V, like Victor, to paste that in. Or you can right click and you can do paste, whichever you want. Just make sure your cursor is in the right place when you do it. And then we'll save with Control O and Enter just to confirm and exit with Control X. Just like that. So now we've got our Docker Compose file updated we need to go update our management.json file. So we're going to do nano management.json, just like this. It's going to bring us in here. And again, I've got some secrets here, so don't worry. I'll, I'll try to blur them out. I'm going to move further down in this document. And then we're going to go and actually update this document to add the section we need. So scroll down, and I'm right here next to this piece that says reverse proxy. So I'm just going to go back one space so that I'm up here on the, on the at the end of the line right after the comma. I'm just going to hit enter. And then I'm going to go grab the information out of their documentation again right here for the relay. I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to copy it. Go back into my document. I'm going to paste. Now I need to improve my indentation a little bit here, but uh, we'll just make that look better. There we go. So we've got everything we need here. We just need to go fill in our variables just like we did before. So for our domain, again, we're just going to type in the same thing. So this is netbird.sysmainit.com in this case. And this port is 33080. Uh, 24 hours is fine. I don't think there's any reason to not, to, I don't think there's a reason to change that. So let's just leave it. And then our auth secret, we need that same exact thing we had before. So we're just going to go back into our, um, Terminal, so we'll do Control O to save, Control X to exit, and we'll just grab this string like that. Control Shift C to copy. Go back in here. Oops. Uh, we'll go back into our management.json. We'll move down, and I'm going to come right here to this second quote, so it's highlighted. I'm just going to do Control Shift V so that my key is right in between my two quotes, just like that. Control-O to save, Control-X to exit. 
So we've made the changes we need to make to both of our files. We just need to go do our Docker updates real quick and that's gonna get everything up and running for us on the new version. All right, now that we've made those changes, we're just gonna do a Docker space compose and then space pull. It's gonna go out and get the newest versions of all the different Docker containers that it's using, plus it's gonna pull down this relay for us. So that's a good thing. You should see this one here pulling down. These other ones, you're gonna see them get updated. And honestly, this is a really small project. Uh, Network, Network's done a great job just really minimizing this thing too. All right, it's all pulled and we're gonna do Docker compose up dash D and then dash dash force hyphen recreate just like this it should look like docker space compose space up space hyphen d space hyphen hyphen force hyphen recreate once you've got that all set just hit enter it's going to bring down your current containers real quick it's going to recreate them it's going to restart them be a little bit patient so it's already started just give it a couple of minutes to make sure that it gets up and running and we will go and we'll go to net bird.sysmainit.com and you should see your little logo like that it should bring you to your authentic login information here and then i'm going to go and log in it may warn you about redirecting you that's fine you should get your netbird loading and then you should see your devices so we're now running our latest version of NetBird, and if you look out here, some of my clients are going to tell me like, hey, there's a new version available and you don't seem to be running that yet. Um, this one here that's for my Ansible, I believe is on the latest one because I updated it earlier today, which is awesome. But yeah, these others need to actually get updated too. So I need to go out and do a little bit of work to update those guys. But really, again, because these are Linux servers, I just need to do my apt package management update stuff and it'll go grab the newest version for me, which will grab that 0.29.1. Now the one thing you need to know about this uh, is it's here in their documentation as well but they haven't updated their iOS or Android clients yet so if you don't see those get updated don't worry this is backwards compatible everything should still function we didn't remove the turn server or any of the co-turn stuff leave that as it is uh, but they they know that it needs to be backwards compatible for a while so they're leaving that there which is great, but they do have plans to get their iOS and Android apps updated as well to take advantage of this new system uh, that they've put together. So I'm pretty excited. I love to see these updates come through. I know somebody had a question about, hey, how do I go about doing this? Their guide is pretty straightforward. They just didn't say anywhere specifically like, hey, here's the port that we're using. So it would have been nice to see that in here somewhere, um, unless I just missed it, but I don't think I did. I really looked for it, um, but I did jump over and ask some questions to make sure I understood what they were trying to accomplish. Uh, and a lot of people had some great questions. And if you want to see that, it's here. Again, I'll have this in my show notes uh, as well so that you can jump over and check out what they've got going on in their discussion. But that's it. It's not too terrible to upgrade your NetBird system and keep everything up and running. Uh, pretty great. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along in the open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>